So after installing Carton, you can find the extension under Window, Extensions, Carton. Now, if you want to create a Carton layer, you can select as many text layers as you want and click Carton. And this will create a new Carton layer for each individual text layer. A Carton layer is just a shape layer with a custom effect on it. If you want multiple text layers to be inside one Carton, you can select your text layers, hold Alt or Option and click on the main button. This will create just one Carton layer and all the other text layers are included. If you already created a carton layer and you want to include new text layers into this carton layer, you can select your text layers and your carton layer, hold Ctrl or Command and click the main button and this will include the new text layers into the existing carton layer. Now, if you want to delete your cartons, just highlight them and click on the delete button. If you want to duplicate your cartons, the best way to do it is by selecting your carton layers and clicking on the duplicate button. If you have created a more complicated rig, you can also select all of your items, click duplicate, and it will duplicate all the necessary elements for the specific rig. Next, there's a reload button. So if you've created a carton layer with a text layer and you rename your text layer, also change the label color, for example, you can click on reload and the carton layer will rename and recolor itself. You can parent carton layers to each other. So if you select your parent first and your child second and click on the parent button, this will parent the child to the parent layer. You can rotate, you can scale, you can scale the child and the child will always be on the left bottom corner of the parent layer. If you want to change the position, you can use this little handle here and drag it around the, the main parent button. If you want to delete the parent child rig, you can select your elements and click on delete. This also works with a carton layer and a shape layer, for example. And you don't even need a carton layer, you can just click on a shape layer and a text layer, click on parent, and now the text layer will be parented to the shape layer. You can create master control layers for your cartons. So if you have a bunch of cartons and you don't want to change the padding individually, you can just select them, click on master control button, and this will create a new layer with a new effect on it. If we change the padding in here now, you can see that the padding of each individual carton is now linked to this master control layer. You can see which carton is linked to a master control layer by looking at the icon. You can have as many master control layers as you want. And if you want to delete the master control layers, you can deselect everything, click on delete. Now everything is deleted. Or well, if you want to delete a specific master control layer, you can click on the Cardone master and click on delete. Now we have those two share width and share height buttons. If you created two Carton layers and you want them to have the same width and the same height, you can select both and click on share width and click on share height. And now they will share the same width and the same height, no matter how you scale them. If you want to change the position of this text layer inside of this carton, you can click on a text layer and adjust the align text. And if you want the text to be left aligned, but be on the right side of the carton, you can click on your carton, go into text, go to alignment horizontal, and in this case, choose right. Now the text will be stuck to the right side of the carton, but it will be left aligned. To change the padding of a carton layer, you can just click on the carton layer, go to padding and adjust your padding. You can also adjust the padding on each side separately. You have the option to scale the padding proportionately with your text layer. 
So this is turned on by default. And if I click on my text layer and scale it, you can see that the padding scales proportionately. If I uncheck this and scale my text layer, the padding now has an absolute value. So it doesn't scale with the text layer. You can scale your cartoon from each side separately. This is very useful if you want to create mats or if you just want to reveal your text layer. On the text tab, you'll find four different options. The first one is text height, which is by default set to cap height. You can set it to X height and to full height. And as you can see, cap height means that the carton looks at the cap letters of the text to calculate its size. With X height, it will use the lowercase letters to determine the size of the carton. And the full height, it will determine the ascenders and the descenders as well to determine its size. Then there is ignore additional lines. If you have a text layer with more than one line, the carton will include all of those lines. But if you don't want to include all of them and just include the first one, you can turn this option on and it will only consider the first line of your text layer. Then we have the alignment horizontal and the alignment vertical options. I've prepared a little animation where the text writes on. And on this carton layer, I've set the alignment horizontal to left and to bottom, which means the carton is now stuck to the left and bottom side of itself. So it animates from the left bottom side on. On this layer, I have the same animation, but the carton layer is set to alignment horizontal right and alignment vertical top, which means it will animate from the top right corner of itself. Then we have carton at time. This is very crucial for any animation you're going to do. By default, it is set to current time and you have five different options. Current time means that the carton will use the current time, which is this little time indicator, to determine the size of the carton. So here in this example, I've created a, a write on effect on my text and also a little scale. And you can see that the carton will just fit perfectly to the text layer. The next option is in point. This is using the in point of our text layer to determine the size of the carton. So at the in point, the text layer is not visible which means the carton will also not be visible. Then there's out point. This is using the out point of our text layer to determine the size of the carton. Then we have midpoint. This is using the midpoint of our text layer, which is the time between the in point and the out point of our text layer to determine its size. On this example, I've created a write on effect and a write off effect. And this can be very useful if you know that you animate your layer on and you animate your layer off and you know that on the midpoint there's no animation. Then we have the custom time option. You can change the custom time here. I've set it to one second, which means that the carton will look at the one second mark of our text layer to determine the size of the carton. Then we have the width and height tab. There you can see and select layers you want to share the width with and the height. This is typically done automatically if you use your share width and your share height buttons. You can also have a minimal width and a minimal height. And if I increase these numbers, the carton layer will now never be smaller than those values. You can also use a maximal width. And if I enable this one and increase the slider to, oh, let's say, 5 pixels, then our carton will never be wider than 5 pixels. You can do that as well with your height. This can be very useful if you want to create an underline, for example. The next tab is the round corners tab. This is very self-explanatory. You can round all the corners together or you can round them separately. And you also have the option to do a little squircle. In the parent tab, you can find a stick to layer option. This is done automatically if you've created a parent brick. Then there's parent at time. This is basically the same thing as Katonga time, but using the parent. So I've created an animation where my parent layer scales from zero to 100. And because our child is stuck to the bottom right of our parent layer, it moves accordingly. 
this is often not what we want. We want our child to be stationary. And you can achieve this by going to the control layer of our child, go to parent, and then in this case, midpoint works well because we don't have animation on our midpoint. And now our child is stationary. Then we have the option to change the anchor point of our child by using the little drop down menus. But I would always recommend using the little UI handle since it's way more intuitive. So then we have the option to close the anti aliasing gap. After you've created a parent child rig, the child sits perfectly on top of your parent layer. But this sometimes creates a little gap between those two layers, which will flicker if you move your parent layer. If you don't want that, you can turn this option on and this will move the child just so ever slightly to close this gap. If you have a stroke on your child layer and you want the stroke to be considered in your rig, you can uncheck this ignore stroke width button and it will move your child accordingly. If you have a stroke on your parent layer, you can go into your parent layer settings, go to parent and uncheck the same option as well. And this will also move your child accordingly. In the extras tab, you will have two different options. The first option is rotation mode, and you can choose between three different rotation modes. And when you rotate your text layer, you can see that the carton handles rotation differently on each rotation mode. And lastly, we have exclude inactive layers. So here I've created a carton with four different layers and all of them come on in different times. And by default, the exclude inactive layers is turned on, which means that those layers who are not visible yet will not be included in the carton. If I turn it off, even the layers which are not visible yet are included in the carton. 